Hey guys, so today I've got some tips on how to play the attack heli in Battlefield 4. Now, before I begin, this is by no means a guide for seasoned veterans of the franchise or people who are already really good. And I'll be the first to say that I'm not one of the best heli pilots around, okay? But I feel like I've learned a ton of stuff over the past few months. I was always that guy who put the helis on the back burner and never really bothered using them. So I just wanted to encourage you guys to give them a go and pass on some of what I've learnt for any of the players new to Battlefield 4. Guys, if you enjoy Battlefield vehicles and tutorials and guides for them, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be covering them extensively in Battlefield 2042, just like I did for Battlefield 4, so make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss those. Alright guys, so here we are on Siege of Shanghai, so let's go over the manoeuvring of the heli a little bit. For anybody who's coming in from Battlefield 5 or Battlefield 1 who hasn't flown helis before, they can be a little bit confusing. And one of the things a lot of people do is they hold W and they think that that's accelerate, and then they just basically go up and gain altitude, and then as soon as they tilt the uh, heli forward, they just keep on gaining altitude and they, they tilt a bit too far, they keep on holding W and they actually end up crashing into the ground. Um, the thing you have to make sure you do is, is basically whichever direction you point the helicopter, that's the direction that it's going to go, okay? So wherever the rotors are facing, if you want to go forward, you have to tilt the heli forwards. If I want to go backwards like this, then I have to tilt the heli uh, and the rotors backwards. Obviously, if I tilt it too far backwards, then that's going to happen, okay? And that's something that we see a lot of the time with new helicopter pilots. So yeah, one of the things you need to get good at is manoeuvring the helicopter. So, you know, I recommend going into the test range or even an empty server like Siege of Shanghai here or Dawnbreaker, something with a lot of cover, something with skyscrapers and just getting used to manoeuvring the helicopter. Don't worry about aiming at targets, hitting tow missiles and all that sort of stuff straight away. Just get kind of comfortable with the way that the helicopter manoeuvres. I find that in third person, it sort of moves around much quicker, like the sensitivity on the mouse has more of an effect on the vehicle in third person than it does in first person. So for example here, let's say I'm up on the sea flag here, I'm spamming my zoonies on some infi, my gunners having a go at the infantry as well, and then bup, 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 all of a sudden we get locked on. I hit his yem, uh, and then I'm going to go into third person here, and I'm going to sort of duck down a bit quicker, and then I like to switch to first person, and first person for me is kind of... Uh, it kind of allows for those more precise movements, so, you know, if you want to go and corner uh, around a building here and just, you know, really, like, hug it closely like that, I wouldn't necessarily want to do those maneuvers in third person, personally, just because I, I just get a better feeling for where the helicopter actually is in first person, but in third person, you are able to corner tighter. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but, but that's my thought on that. Uh, either way, you know, I recommend just having a good fly around and just getting to grips with the control scheme of the helicopter. Okay, and another thing is also just to bear in mind a few places that you can you can hide from in each map. So Siege of Shanghai is an obvious great map for attack heli gameplay. You know, one of the main threats you're going to encounter, except for the enemy helis, are infantry locking you on. So you don't need to have insane map awareness, but just knowing a few simple routes can help you. So here, sort of behind the sea flag, you can you can come and hide behind uh, this large block of buildings here. You can line of sight lock-ons there. You can then fly straight into here, and the guys up on the sea flag won't be able to get a shot from you. And you've got all of these buildings over on, on the A flag side. So this is usually where I will come. I'll sort of come back to my deployment here when I get locked on from the sea flag, purely because I know the enemy attack helicopter is gonna be coming from over this direction as well as the transport helicopter, and it just seems to be the safest place. You're also safe from these rooftops here, this one and this one and this one down here. Sometimes they will have infantry on them as well. And also this area um, can actually be a little bit safe here. So this can block uh, a lot of shots from, from down below here. But of course, if you go and land here like this, it's, you're maybe still going to be open to RPGs and whatnot from those rooftops, but you can use these signs to block. It's maybe not the best place, but you can also land here and, and repair and things like that in a cinch. And while we're on the topic of uh, repairing, one little trick I want to show you guys, you will actually be out of bounds here. But if you get into a helicopter and you seat switch, so let's say I'm repairing here, and I get in and I don't seat switch, you'll notice it takes a while for me to take off. And that time can be time enough for somebody up here to small you or RPG you for a nice easy shot. However, 
if you uh, get out of here and you're repairing and you jump in, you seat switch, and then you go back to the pilot seat again, you will be able to take off much sooner. And that works in all of the helicopters in the game. Definitely something you want to get used to doing, just doing that seat switch if you can, if you don't have the gunner. And if your gunner friend gets out to repair as well, if he knows what he's doing, he will wait for you to seat switch before he gets back in and uh, claims that gunner seat. Okay, so the next thing I want to go over is ECM usage, and I'll put in some demonstrations of this. But what you really want to do is make sure that you have ECM available to you at all times. If you don't have ECM up, you can easily eat a Stinger or an Igler, get mobility hit, and that's pretty much going to be the end of you. So wherever you start getting locked on, you can afford to hang around the building. You know, maybe you get locked on, you pop ECM. You can maybe afford to take out the infantry up there who is uh, targeting you. But after that, you kind of need to retreat. So you have to have an already planned out route that you're going to travel uh, in order to get to safety. You know, and then once you're safe, you basically just stay behind the cover and wait for ECM to recharge. So one of the main things here is just figuring out where the lock-ons are actually coming from so that you can deal with those targets because you definitely have the firepower to take them down. The problem is more just knowing which infantry soldier is going for you. Of course, you will normally see a lock-on warning symbol within the game, so you can tell the rough direction. But like I said before, some common places, if you're getting locked around here, is this rooftop, uh, this one here on this, on this particular map, and then this one. Of course, if the sea flag was up, which it isn't at the moment, unfortunately I couldn't find an empty siege server with the tower still up, the tower is a big place for infantry lock-ons as well. This rooftop down here, this one there... Um, this one here. Most of the time you're getting locked on, it's going to be by somebody on a rooftop. So as an attack heli duo, what you really want to do is uh, head up onto those rooftops, try to find out who it is, um, just go in there, ECM, take them out, and then go back and wait for your ECM to recharge again. All right, so let's quickly run over the loadout here. Now, as the pilot, you want to be taking Zuni rockets most of the time. Some people think smart rockets are the best because they have this homing functionality, but Zunis are the best at taking out enemy vehicles. They will do 20 damage per shot, so you can take out an enemy helicopter, a tank, or whatever really, with five Zuni rockets. And honestly, taking down the enemy jets, the enemy helis, those are going to be your biggest threats, so that's how you want to arm uh, the heli. Secondary, tow missile. A lot of people, again, run heat seekers because, you know, they try the tow, it's just too difficult to use, so they use the heat seekers instead. But honestly, the tow, once you get half decent at using it, and I am by no means that great at them, but I'll throw in some clips here of uh, some tow missiles kills I've gotten myself, and a little bit later in the video, I'll give you guys some tips on how to use the tow missiles. But, you know, with this thing, it's much better at anti-air than the heat seekers are. And you can also attack ground vehicles to boot, so tow missile, hands down the best option here. Countermeasure, ECM is just superior to flares in my opinion in almost every situation for both the jets and the helicopters. You know, ECM allows you to preemptively trigger it, go in, take out infantry and retreat before they've even started locking you on. So you can't really do the same thing with flares. Fire extinguisher, you probably want to take this if you're playing with a friend and you're in the gunner seat. So what you want to do is set this up as your pilot position countermeasure so that if you're the gunner you can jump into the pilot seat and seat switch use the fire extinguisher then jump back in the gunner seat and let your friend get in and use ecm instead so that if you're disabled in midair you're going to survive but obviously that's only really going to work if you're playing with somebody that you know maybe you're on live comms or something like that upgrades Air radar is pretty much a no-brainer. You just really want to see when enemy jets and helis are going to go for you. You know, gyro stabilizer isn't really a big deal if you're not caught out of position. And again, stealth coating, uh, you're going to be able to pop ECM beforehand. So I think air radar, for me at least, is the best choice. And then we get to the gunner seat. Secondary for the gunner here is the TV-guided missile. Once again, kind of difficult to use. Not as difficult as the tow missiles, I don't think, but way, way more effective than the laser-guided. You know, the TV missile goes straight through APS. It one-shots jets. It disables enemy helis. It's just all in all a fantastic weapon and, you know, just super cool as well. I mean, who doesn't want TVs, right? For your gunner optics, the zoom and the thermal are really really good zoom is great for taking out targets at distance but for me 
it has to be the thermal thermal vision in battlefield 4 it has to be said it is just way too overpowered they really need to nerf it the only downside to thermal is that it does have a certain range beyond that range you can't really see the infantry at all so you have to turn it off and just try to spot them and and target them manually but if they're within range the thermal vision is just barn on the best pick here and then the gun upgrade belt feeder this is going to allow you to reload your weapon faster and get those kills faster if somebody's locking you on with the stinger and you need to take them out or if there's just a bunch of infantry on a rooftop you want to be able to clear them as fast as possible the proximity scan here just isn't as useful and quite frankly if you've got thermal vision it's just a waste you just don't need it all right so next we're going to talk about launching tow missiles now this is one of the things that it took me the longest time to learn in the attack helicopter, using the tow missiles. Uh, it's it's kind of just difficult to see where they're heading, but one of the things that really helped me learn was heading into the test range and just trying to tow these drones that are flying around here. I mean, they're, they're almost stationary, to be honest with you. They're flying very, very slowly, so they're very easy targets, but they are quite small, they are quite slim and slender, and, you know, you can practice your toes up close, you can practice from different angles, um, you can practice them far away. It's very weird towing objects uh, in, in the attack heli, actually. It's not really anything like in the LAV, where you can have the LAV stationary and you can just change the direction that you're facing with the gun. In the attack heli, if you want to redirect the tow, you have to move the entire helicopter. And I think because of that, you know, your perspective of looking at where the tow missile is changes all of the time. Okay, so one of the biggest tips with the tow missiles, as well as the TVs actually, is not to fire the tow exactly where the target is, but where it's going to move to, so that you have to do the least corrections possible. So, see this one over here, you're going to want to sort of fire the tow towards where it's going to be moving at the front, so that it will sort of collide with the tow. And you don't look at your crosshair when you fire a tow, just look at the actual missile, a little glistening dot in the distance look at that and just try to move your helicopter and make it uh, collide with your target so that's another thing it depends on sort of sort of how you're looking at the target sometimes the toe goes down below your crosshair sometimes it's up above your crosshair generally speaking toes in this sort of an angle are very hard to hit if you can get some altitude above your target one of the good tips that helped me is um just hit the s key a little bit you'll see it just it just made the toe angle down a little bit and if you're coming down on top of your target that seems to be the best way to get them so if you can get a helicopter and get a height advantage first like this and then you just come down on top of him aim where he's going press the s key a tiny bit there most of the time you'll get a nice easy kill now obviously it doesn't really happen like that in a real game all of the time if the enemy heli is any good he's going to be going for you he's going to be lining up on you and he's not going to let you uh, get a height advantage but well, that's the good thing about the test range, really. You've just got to, you know, be patient. You can try at all different ranges and all different angles to try and hit targets like that one, for example. You know, and just try to get a feel of how the toes work. And eventually, you'll sort of, you'll just get it, you know. It's, uh, it, it really is one of those things that you can't learn without just doing it. You know, I can sit here and talk to them blue in the face, but it's just one of those skills in Battlefield 4 that you have to practice. I didn't do it for a long, long time. I completely neglected the toes. Um, you know, in the past few months that I've been using them, like I say, I'm not fantastic with them or anything, but I'm, I'm getting better. So moving on to TV missiles, when it comes to TVs, I like the test range for doing this. It's a good exercise in seat switching as well. So just get into the heli, you know, hit F2, uh, press F on your keyboard to switch to the secondary gunner seat, and then just try and, uh, predict wherever that drone is going to fly to and TV the hell out of him. You'll notice the people who are the best at TVs, which is definitely not me, they will do the least correction. So the trick to the TV is basically leading your target enough so that you have to do as little correction as possible. You know, so that's the trick. Fire it, move it straight away in front of where you think the vehicle is going to go. And then just at the last second, if you see you're just a little bit off center and you're not quite going to hit it, then you make an adjustment. You want to be making as few adjustments as possible. And personally, for me, I find, you know, if I'm looking at the target, then I will often overshoot it, overcompensate and miss the target entirely. Whereas if I'm just focusing with my eyes on where the target is heading, so a little bit ahead of that jet's nose, a little bit ahead of where the helicopter is heading, I will more often hit those targets. 
So another quick tip here about unspotting yourself. So in Battlefield 4, whenever you're spotted, if you get out of a vehicle or you switch seats, you will be unspotted. Now, if you're lucky enough, or I guess you could say unlucky enough, to be in the attack helicopter alone, you can unspot yourself by simply seat switching like that. Of course, most of the time you're going to have a gunner, so the only way to unspot yourself would normally be to, you know, go land on the ground, uh, jump out of the helicopter like this, jump back in again, and you would be unspotted. But obviously, that's not ideal when you're flying around a building trying to take out targets. However, you can, if you're quick about it, jump out of the heli midair, jump straight back in. It's really fast and it unspots you. Okay, so if you want to unspot, the general rule is if you just sort of swipe your mouse to the right and keep on turning it like that, then your heli will lean to the right and you'll also get out of the correct side. I think if you if you lean to the right, you get out the left side of the helicopter and you can easily get back in. And the opposite is true if you swipe left. So you pretty much just swipe left with your mouse, keep on turning the mouse so that your soldier turns then to face the helicopter and then you hit E again and you should be able to get back in. So, you know, whichever way you're going, it should work either way. I'm not really that great at it, but it's, it's kind of just one of those janky things that you should practice in the test range. And I'm sure once you get used to doing it, in combat and stuff like that it just becomes second nature most great attack heli pilots they just jump out and, and seat switch or unspot as it's called uh, all the time you know and this combos really well with when you popped ecm and you go to hide behind a skyscraper to line of sight lock-ons doing a quick unspot kind of just makes the enemy forget about you a little bit more you know they don't really know where you are obviously if you're spotted all of the infantry with those stingers are going to see where you are, where you're coming up behind that skyscraper. If you unspot yourself, they don't really know which direction you're going to attack from. So, I hope this was helpful for somebody out there. Just like I've said with all my jet tutorials in the past, practice makes perfect. That is really what it comes down to. So, even if you can't hit a single toe or a TV, just keep at it and I'm sure you'll get there in the end. If you guys want to ask me anything else on the subject of helis or jets or just whatever really, come on by my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash ghostgaminggg. I usually stream a few times a week, so you can always catch me for a chat there. Now, if you're interested to know more on the subject of attack helicopters, I recommend checking out AKA Art. He's always been a big heli guy and he's made some fantastic tutorials on the subject in the past. And also a buddy of his by the name of Corsair FPS, who is just an absolute god with the helis. He's way better than I could ever be. So I'll link both of them down below for you. But in any case, I hope this will get you started. If it did, or just if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like is appreciated. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.